about a year and a half ago, I created a video talking about how to make a bootable Windows XP ISO. Now people have been commenting saying it doesn't work for them, and they're getting somewhere saying cannot find bootimage.ima. Well, the problem is, they were trying to use my tutorial on Windows XP to create a bootable Windows Vista 7 or 8 ISO. The structure and the structure of a bootable ISO for later Windows copies have been changed. They no longer require the boot.img file, they require a different one. It's the bootimage.ima. Today I'll be showing you how to create a Windows Vista bootable ISO. This works with Windows 7, Windows Vista, and Windows 8. files that you'll be needing are the Windows Vista 7 or 8 source files on the DVD. Once you have them, you will also need the bootimage.ima. If you don't have that, then your ISO image will not boot. Also you're going to need ImageBurn, which is free and open source. I'll provide a link in the description. So, to make your bootable file, you're going to go over to create image from file and from file slash folders, click that. Then you do show disk layout editor. And you navigate to where you have your files, open it, and you're going to go and select all these files. And you want to put in the root of your CD or virtual CD. After doing that, exit out of that window and click advanced, bootable, and select make bootable, make image bootable. Then you're going to go over to boot image, and then you're going to go over to wherever you have your file, and you're going to select it. After selecting it, you're then going to select a destination where you want your ISO to be created. Then you get to name it. I'm going to name mine Windows Vista ISO. Then you save it, and you click commit, or the build button. It'll give you a rundown of the options. I'm just going to keep it default. Then it's going to tell you how many files there are and how many folders. And then what kind of data type, what kind of data type it is, the file system, the boot label, and then the size it will be, and then sectors, whatnot. I'm going to hit OK because that seems all OK. And then we'll start to write the image. Depending on your computer speed, this can take upwards to a couple minutes to even an hour most likely not. If you're running something probably like as old as a Core 2 do, it'll probably do it in maybe under 10 minutes. I have a Core i7 so it's going to do it pretty fast. But I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's finished. After the creation of the ISO image finishes, you'll be greeted with a box that says Operation Successfully Completed. Click OK. Then, where have you saved your file? it will be there. So here's our ISO, Windows Vista ISO. So now to test if it boots properly, you can use your favorite virtual virtualization software, whether it be VirtualBox or VMware. So we're going to start it up, and I'm going to select one of my virtual machines to attach the ISO to. And this is just more of a demonstrational thing. It there we go. I know that it'll boot just kind of a you know. So let's go and select a virtual machine. Let's select our Windows 7 one. Set so out the options. Now I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna go into attach our ISO. Select it, and then after we unpause, it should say press any key to boot from CD. You press the key, and it should, there we go, Windows is loading files.
And there we go. So now, um, this has been Zesty Panda with another tutorial on how to create a bootable Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8 ISO. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments or send me an email. So, or a personal message on uh, YouTube. So yeah, I hope this helped and uh, I have more videos probably soon. I might do a Windows 7 or Windows Vista review, but we'll see. So this has been Zesty Panda.